Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Yarnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. And as promised, we're going to start a brand new painting. And this one's really going to be another adventure. Uh, you know, after, well, almost about 30 years now of doing these programs and teaching and just having a good time with so many students around the world, it's fun to kind of branch off and do different, unique things. Um, and this is one of them. You know, lately we've been doing some really fun stuff. We really appreciate all the reference material that you all are sending in to us. I'm starting to use it more and more on the program and in our reference files back at the studio and in some of our you know, instructional materials. It means a lot to us, but it helps you guys because you're getting to, to do some of the things that you request. And of course, I'm only one artist. You know, I don't have a whole staff of artists, so it takes me a while to get through everything. We are still on our little tour around the country trying to do paintings from all 50 states. We're about almost about halfway through there now, I think. I'll, someday I'll get a board up here and show you what states we've done. I should be doing that so you can kind of see. But please remember, if you're in an area where you haven't seen us do something, send us in some uh, photos or reference material and we'll take a look at it. Because we do keep a file and every once in a while Donna will put it on my, my desk or my table and I'll look through it and you know, kind of get some ideas. And this is another example of that. Now this is a beautiful painting. You guys are going to love this. It's kind of like one of the old master styles. And it's called the Whispers, Whisper of Wilderness. And so let's go over here and take a look at our reference material. I don't have any photographs. This is completely made up from scratch, uh, just from a, a series of places I've been, uh, atmospheres I've experienced over the time. But I love the deep, dense forest effect. If I can get them to pull back a little bit so you can see the whole painting, that would be good. What's important about this, you guys, is that, now this one's framed, of course, but it adds to the atmosphere. All right, here's what we got. We have a horizon line that's about a third of the way from the bottom. What I want is a strong, extreme light source coming through the forest, hitting what we call the hot, this is what's called the hot spot. And obviously it's their center of interest. It's not just a focal area, but it's a center of interest. We're gonna go right to this deer. Now you can put anything you want to. I've had uh, paintings like this where you could put a, you know, maybe a, a dad walking his little boy or a little boy walking his dog or you know, anything walking down here. But I just put the deer there because I just am a nature person and that's what I like. But learning how to get the sun rays, the strong light, the good crisp color, and the silhouette, this is a backlit painting. We're gonna discuss all those things. Also, this is what you call a monochromatic color scheme. Mono meaning one. It uh, it's kind of lends itself, in this case, on the green side, of course. So it's more of a, a late spring or summer uh, scene and late evening, and so we're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. Now, I want you to see what I've done. Now, this is kind of a takeaway from our normal underpainting. As most of you know, we normally underpaint with a color kind of like this gray right there. Uh, and we, but this time, we're using the green. And that's what we, we're doing this time instead of this. is Because of the green tone painting, it makes the layering process much easier and faster and more effective in the application of your glazes. And you'll see what I, what I mean by that here in a second. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna discuss a little bit about your composition and how to get started in the phases of getting your background in there. We are gonna use our, our uh, hake brush. Uh, all of you know what this is all about. This is the brush that's made out of goat hair. It's one of the finest hairs, again, known to man. It's got a nice chisel. Yes, they do shed. It won't matter so much in this painting because they're all gonna be embedded kind of up here in the, uh, you know, in the sky. But remember, you can lightly sand those off by just taking a little piece of sand, uh, uh, you know, one of these sponge sandpaper pads that you can buy at most craft stores or even some of the big box stores, and you just lightly kind of roll your brush your, like this, and it'll take off all those hairs. And so if they bug you that much, you know, take them off. They don't bug me unless it's right in the middle of somebody's eyeball or middle of a real clean, pristine sky where, it's, where the light's catching it and casting a shadow. Yeah, that's fine. But don't let those hairs bother you so much. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right here in the center. Now, if you notice, I've made a quick sketch here, and I use my soft fine charcoal. Get it back here. All right, so we have a, a little hillside going in this way. We have your opening here. Now, this road actually meanders and kind of creates this bend back here and then it kind of moves this direction. And make sure you know it's got some ellipses that makes it look flat as it comes out here. These ellipses have to be out like that. Now, notice the road engulfs the entire base of the painting. 
all the way up about three inches on this side and almost three inches on this side. There's a little hillside here. And this is so that your eye will follow the land masses in towards your uh, focal point, okay? So all those things have to work together in unison. It's not just a hot spot for the light, but it's also the eye follows the angles of your contours. All right, now starting right here in the center, take your hake brush, come down here. Now what I've mixed here, I've pre-mixed a light pale yellow and with a little white in it, and I've got my traditional white. And of course, we've got our normal palette out here. Now you just take the yellow-white mixture, and you just start right down here in the center, and that's a fairly fluid. It's not like, uh, you might say, it's not a glaze, but it's kind of fluid. And you just put this on to start with. This will be the center. And you kind of feather this out like this. Now remember, folks, in the early stages of all these paintings, and I know I still hear this, and it's so fascinating to me. I love it when I get cards and letters from people, and they say, you know, or I didn't think you were going to ever get out of that mess on that first or two. Usually the first couple of sessions is just mostly underpainting. And so, you know, you have to kind of be thinking, well, how are you going to get out of that? Well, now after you put that on there, now you take your hooker's green, which is up here in the corner, and you start right down here in the center. And this will be your first movement of color in terms of your, uh, you know, when the sun rays are going to go in there. We are going to dry brush some of the, the highlights in there as time passes, but right now we're just trying to get some color in there. I'm going to take a little more hooker's green, kind of darken the edges a little bit. Now notice these X's, nice big X's. Now you guys are not going to, again, I'm just going to again warn you, as I always do, and sometimes I, I really feel kind of odd that, you know, man, I hope they believe me. This is going to turn out to be something. I actually had one lady said one time she was watching the show because we get, you know, letters from all of you. We really appreciate it. She said, well, that was so ugly. I decided just to turn it off. I didn't want to watch it because I didn't think you could make a painting out of that. And then she saw the last episode and then she got all excited. Now she's one of our regular students. I thought that was really funny because remember painting is a process, folks. It's not like anything else in life where you can have instant success. I mean, not like a microwave where in 30 seconds you can have a hot cup of coffee. Even that's not fast enough for us these days. We're very impatient people. So we've got to learn to let these things develop, okay? So as you go up, you take your green and you just keep, now you're, I'm just mostly using the hooker's green and enough water to make it slide, okay? Now as I go up, I'm going to continue to darken it so we can create this feathering effect. Now I'm having to pull the canvas forward because there's, because of all the lights in here, you guys, I have a little issue with, with the, um, you know, the glare. So, and you may have to do, have that same problem at home. They now actually make easels that angle forward like this. I've got some special clips on my big easel at my studio that do this. I can, I can clip it forward like that. Now see how I'm doing this? I'm just adding more and more hooker's green as I go up and I'm back to the X stroke. See the nice X's? And we're creating a gradation blend, gradation of value from top to bottom. I'm using just enough water to make it slide. Now I'm going to explain a little bit more about why we use this color to underpaint. And I know this is a little technical, but sometimes I just, well, I just don't have a choice. Hooker's green is a transparent color. What that means is that the pigment that it's made out of, when it's mined out of the earth, as with some other colors, doesn't have as much strength, in a sense, to cover when you put it on there. So sometimes it takes more than one layer. And so it, in order to solve that problem, at least for this painting, I went ahead and darkened it with the darker green so I can do it in one coat instead of four or five or three or four or two or three. So now with just this nice dark underpainting, when I put the hooker's green on there, because this has already got a dark tone, you don't see any canvas coming through. Because if this were a white canvas or a light gray or medium gray canvas, you'd probably have to double, maybe triple coat it to get good coverage. So that's the, the method in the madness here. And those are all things that you would eventually learn and know as you grow as an artist. Now, as you go up, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna darken this even more. So you take your hooker's green, and you add a little bit of uh, dioxazine purple, maybe a smidge of burnt sienna. You start up here in the corner, 
And you see how I worked that, now you work that down into your already existing tone there until, see it's a little darker up there. It's, it's like painting a sky. It's just green, a green sky, so to speak.